In this lesson, we will take a closer look at the specific elements used to create a dynamo graph. By the end of this lesson, you will have an understanding of the components that comprise a dynamo graph, the basics of defining an algorithm, and what it means to map together nodes to update results automatically. To get started with Dynamo Open, we will go ahead and start a new blank workspace. After starting a new blank workspace, we're going to modify our run mode. If you recall, Dynamo operates in a manual run mode by default. This means that you have to press run to display changes. For this example, we want to observe these changes live. So we will change this to automatic by selecting the run mode in the bottom left corner and changing it to automatic. For this example, we're going to define a simple graph that creates a point element in the 3D background. The first node we're going to need is a number node. Nodes in Dynamo are the building blocks of definitions and represent a variety of automation routines. These routines include the creation of geometric elements, performing math operations, or modifying elements within the host software that Dynamo is being used within. Let's find this node in the library located on the left side of our window. The number node is located under input, basic, number. Selecting the node in the library will place it on the canvas. In addition to using the navigation in the library, we can search through the entire library in the text box at the top of the library. As you search for that, it will show the results below. In addition to this library search, we have access to search right within our Dynamo Canvas. The in-canvas search can be accessed by right-clicking and searching for the node that you are looking for. Clicking on the node will place it. The number node allows us to define either a double, a number with a decimal value, or an integer, a whole number, by single clicking within the text box on the node. You can give the number node a new name by double clicking the heading of the node. Let's go ahead and do that now. Double click. We will give this a title of origin, select accept, and we will notice a blue dot on the node. This indicates that the node has been renamed. If you hover over the node, you will notice the original node name in the properties of the node. This is very useful when you're dissecting dynamo graphs in the future that were created previously. Additionally, renaming nodes in this manner allows you to more clearly indicate what the node is going to be used for. For our next action, we will be creating a point in the 3D view. The node we will be using for this is called point by coordinates. This is a geometry node, so we can find it in the library as follows. Geometry, points, point by coordinates. Notice that there are a few options for by coordinates. There's an option for utilizing Cartesian coordinates, an option for utilizing XYZ coordinates, and an option for XY coordinates. In our case, we want to place the XYZ version of this node. As we select the node, it will go ahead and place into our canvas. Remember, we can search for these nodes as well, but knowing their location within the library is useful. Nodes have inputs and outputs referred to as ports. Input ports are on the left side of the node, and output ports are on the right side of the node. Data flows through the ports from left to right. Generally speaking, ports require a specific data type. In the case of the point by coordinates node, the XYZ ports require a number, which are either integers, whole numbers, or doubles, which are decimally pointed numbers. We can verify this data type by hovering over the ports. Passing data other than this type will result in an error. As you may have noticed, a point already appeared in our 3D background preview, and the node has a few additional pieces of data present. Currently, the input ports have a blue line next to them. This means that their input is fulfilled, and in this case, the nodes have default values of zero, resulting in a point at zero comma zero comma zero. You can verify the default value by hovering over the port as well. 
The blue line on the input ports indicate that that port has been fulfilled and is functioning as designed. Let's go ahead and modify what this node is creating. We're going to do this by connecting the number node that we previously placed. In order to connect nodes, we will simply click the output port of a node, move our mouse cursor to create a wire, and select an input port to finish the connection. In this case, we made a connection between the origin node to the X input of the point by coordinates node. Selecting a node and dragging it will allow you to move them around the canvas. In order to disconnect this connection, we have a few options. First, we can simply select the ending connection of the wire and move our cursor to a blank portion of the current workspace. After we click, that connection has been broken. We have an additional way of disconnecting wires from nodes. In order to illustrate this, let's go ahead and press Ctrl Z on our keyboard to undo that last action. In this case, we can actually right click on the wire and select Break Connection. This comes in handy when your nodes are connected and they're fairly far from each other on the canvas. If you followed along and broke this connection, let's go ahead and reconnect those nodes. With this action, we have created a relationship between the number and point node. Data is now able to flow downstream from one node to the next. To further view the output of our current algorithm, we will use a watch node. Let's go ahead and right click somewhere, blank on the canvas and search for a watch node. Right click, search for watch, and select watch to place it. After placing the watch node, we'll go ahead and zoom out on our canvas to better organize our graph. The watch node is a unique dynamo object that allows you to inspect the current status of a node by viewing the output port data. Let's connect the output of point by coordinates to the input. In order to visualize a different point, we're going to modify the inputs of our point by coordinates node. So let's go ahead and zoom out. Watch nodes are resizable, so we can drag that grip handle to resize this. And let's make some changes. Rather than search for a number node again in the library or through the search, let's go ahead and take a look at options for copying and pasting nodes. First, we select our number node, which is retitled Origin. From here, we can go to the Edit menu, Copy, Edit, Paste. That is one option for copy and pasting. Let's go ahead and remove that node that we pasted. Another option is to use keyboard shortcuts. So select the node origin, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V on your keyboard. Additionally, after pasting that node with the keyboard shortcut, we can go ahead and press Ctrl Z to undo or Ctrl Y to redo. Dynamo supports these keyboard shortcuts while you're working within it. The last way to copy a node is to simply select our node, in our case origin, press and hold down control on your keyboard and drag the node. This will form a copy of that node. This is actually my favorite way to copy nodes and the way that I use the most. I think you'll probably find the same. In order to create a more dynamic user experience, let's make this graph a little more exciting. We're going to go ahead and use a slider object to update our graph live. Let's navigate to our library and search for the term slider. There are two options available to us, number slider and integer slider. These options allow us to create numbers with decimal precision or whole numbers. Let's go ahead and click on number slider to place a slider object. The slider is a unique user object and allows you to interact with numbers within a defined range. We can modify this range by clicking on the drop down arrow on the left side of the node. Let's go ahead and change the maximum value to 20. And with that change made, we can collapse this menu. The menu is collapsible by simply selecting that arrow once again. With this slider created, we're going to copy it two more times. You can go ahead and copy it whichever way you're comfortable with. In my case, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and drag copy it twice. Once we have three instances of our slider, we're going to connect the outputs to our point by coordinates node. Once again, we can drag from the output to the input. And we'll connect them all accordingly. We'll delete the original origin nodes and clean this up a little bit. 
Now as we modify our sliders, we will see the point in the background update live, and we will see that update happen on our watch node as well. Go ahead and try updating each slider to see what happens. If you want to view the background preview on a greater scale, we can enable background navigation by simply selecting on the geometry icon in the upper right corner, or by pressing Ctrl B on your keyboard. After activating our background 3D preview, we can orbit by holding down the right mouse button and panning by holding down the middle mouse button. Scrolling the mouse wheel will allow you to use zoom. If we select the node icon in the upper right, we can reactivate the node workspace to make further changes to our dynamo graph. Additionally, we can navigate our background preview by holding down the escape key and using the mouse commands. There we have it. With that complete, you have created a graph that updates a point by slider nodes. In addition to that, in this lesson, we covered how to use nodes to build a dynamo graph, how to navigate the dynamo graph canvas, how to use the search and the library to find nodes, and how to navigate the background 3D preview. Hopefully this lesson was interesting, and I hope that you continue through the rest of the lessons with us, and thank you for checking out Dynamo.